Alrighty, it is Wednesday, and yet again I am boozing it up in the city of Houston. <laughs> Instead of beer today, now we're trying wine tasting. I am, uh, well, honestly went out to my old neighborhood so that I could go to one of my favorite places, Bite Macaroon. And I grabbed a couple of macarons and I'm taking them with me to one of the small wineries that does custom bottling. And I'm gonna try some wines. I'm very excited about it because yes. So um, I have the menu in my pocket. Well, not my pocket, in my uh, my handbag. But um, the lady, she she told me just wait till I get in there. So I'm very excited. I'll be the only one doing the, the uh, tasting today. Um, the other cool thing is her laugh. So when y'all hear her, it's, <laughs> it's very loud and almost sounds foamy, but it is her genuine laugh. So it is a lovely, humid, hair swelling, 95 degrees here today. And I don't want anything to do with it. Do macarons taste good? Never had one before. They are delightful and I strongly encourage as you find one is actually done by a French pastry shop. Don't get one from a knockoff place. It's not gonna work so well. Next Thursday, I promised, based upon you all's votes, that we're gonna go to a museum. And uh, I'm really excited about that because I don't know if I'm gonna take you to the Houston Museum of Fine Art or if I'm going to take you all to the Manil collection. I love the Manil collection, but we still got a few days to figure out that adventure. So um, we're almost there. Let me show you the name of the place. It's called Water to Wine. So <laughs> I like Vlogner. Vlogner! So there we are. We're heavily walking our way over to Water to Wine. Low sulfates and daily wine tastings try it before you buy it so here we go we're gonna walk on in and see all the pretty stuff and it smells wonderful and yeah i'm excited hello all right so um yeah i know isn't it a great a good name for the place that's a, a great name so let me grab my little menu and figure out what i'm gonna try um they have they have white wines, rosés, reds, thank you, <laughs> dessert wines, and I love dessert wines. That was one of the things that I shared uh, with the lady here, letting her know that that's one of my favorites. And she says she has a chocolate, and what, no, a coffee and a caramel flavored one. It's totally up my alley. Today for the macarons that I got, I got key lime pie, because that's my favorite. Either cheesecake or key lime pie are my favorite type of pies, um, then followed by apple. Uh, this is a coffee macaroon. This is a mandarin orange, and this is a salted caramel. Ooh. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll put it here so I won't have such a glare while you all help me. <laughs> um, so this is the menu, and this is not even. I know it does look yummy, doesn't it? It's not even fully everything. Like, look at this. And the cool thing about it is, I can come in and make a half batch or a full batch of absolutely custom wine it takes about you said eight to ten weeks right. it's eight to ten weeks and I could have my own bottle that would be just amazing so I was about to do some work and I saw wine tasting and I was like I can't wait <laughs> I'm so excited to try it like honest to goodness and it was recommended to me by a cousin because we're trying to find a gift for another cousin who's getting ready to get married so fun stuff okay so let's go through this again, eh? We have white wines, we have rosé wine, red wine, dessert wine, sparkling wine, and then we have the Houston Winery signature ones. Um, so I think today, because obviously it's hot and I'm not trying to be sauced, I'm going to try, <sighs> definitely going to try a dessert wine. I have to. Like, I love port, and if you don't know what port is, they're usually very heavy. Um, they're reds. So they give a lot of flavor, a lot of ambiotic flavor, for lack of better terms, to pair with your dessert. Um, so I'm going to save that for probably the uh, the salted caramel. Okay. Um, let's see. I love a port. I know ports are great. Okay, let's try. They have dry and off dry ones. 
Hmm. So we'll do a white, we'll do a red, and then we'll do a dessert. That'll be what we try today. And then I'll bring my cousins back so they can do what they're supposed to do. But I figure I might as well enjoy this for myself. Um, <laughs> I'm live streaming to um, to my YouTube watchers. We did a uh, we did the St. Arnold's Brewery earlier this week and I'm like oh, I might as well do this so they're like yeah <laughs> so I would like to try I'll do the the off dry Blanc de Bois and uh, for red wow this one says it's class champion I would like to try that then the roughneck yeah and then uh, I'll do the Blanc Barrel Port as the dessert. So I get to try a new release, a Clash Champion 2017. What is the HLSR? Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, the big deal rodeo. This was the champion red wine that I'm gonna try. And then I'm also trying the 2015 champion for reserves. So ah, we got good stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's about to go down. Y'all are silly. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Look at the cute packaging. Years ago, one of my friends ordered all the way from Detroit um, a whole box full of these as a birthday gift for me. I think it was my 30th birthday. I think that's what she did it for. It had it was either 29 or 30. But like I sat in the middle of the kitchen floor with the refrigerator door open and the box because it was so <laughs> Hot. and I'm like oh they have the cutest kind of packaging what's the yellow one uh, again we have key lime pie we have coffee we have mandarin orange and this one up here is salted caramel no lemon today because I didn't want it to distort the uh, taste of the berries and you know the grapes and things that are in the wines so ooh, 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 she's opening it okay let's look <laughs> here we have a lovely <laughs> bottle that she's opening Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> but the entire facility is just, it's so nice. And it's tucked into one of the nice uh, shopping plazas that was about 15 minutes away from where I used to live when I lived out here. But it's all this awesome artworks just all around. So let's look at that while the bottle is. So got... There are about eight different local artists that sell inside. Really? That's awesome. Oh, here's the glass. This is the off-dry Blanc de Bois. Alright, so we see the color on it, everyone. It's absolutely gorgeous because obviously it's a white. So um, first thing about it, new tasting for those who have never been at a tasting. The first thing, is you don't want to just swig it back. You want to take in the entire experience. So you want to make sure to smell it and get a an understanding of the flavor palette. You want to be able to uh, swirl it around in the actual glass. Yeah, it is a disclaimer, but it's it's real. If you are a, a wine taster, if you're more professional about it and you're a sommelier, which was one of the things I talked about during the, uh, the brewery visit about that was something my mom was passionate about. But you learn these things and you never forget it. So all that pomp and circumstance you see in movies or television, it's not for humor. It's it's real. When I want wine tasting, I just listen to my wife for 10 minutes. <laughs> That's a good one. So let's see what it smells like. The sweetness of it is, um, wow. I would gather that it was green grapes. Is this made from green grapes? White but grapes. It's, it's more, they look more yes, yes. Okay. So white grapes, and it smells like it. If you go to the you know grocery store and you smell that, it smells just like that. Um, then you want to absolutely look at the color of it, and we did that, of course. And then you want to take a sip and let it sit in the mouth and swish it around a bit before you just go knocking stuff back. You're killing the experience if you don't do it as such. So let's see what we've got here. Oh man, okay. So it is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt off dry. So it's not a serious bite at the end at all, but it's not too sweet. Um, this would go really good with a, a salad that has like fruit in it. Oh my gosh, it'd be so good. Um, <laughs> um, it doesn't leave a strange bitter aftertaste. So let's see, we're gonna do our own attempt at pairing because 
doesn't always work successfully. Some restaurants you go to or some wineries will uh, have a listing of pairings and whatnot. And that's not to say that this one doesn't, but we're basing it off of what I purchased. So let's see. If I'm going with this being a salad that I would have like fruits in, when it's tequila tasting, you wait till I go to my mom's house, my stepmom's house. <laughs> my stepmother is from Monterrey, Mexico. So she brings a lot of different tequilas home and whatnot. And my stepmother is also a YouTuber as well, uh, but for Spanish speakers. So um, you might want to check that out. But um, this is the mandarin orange one. So imagine you have a, a very uh, vibrant, uh, I'd say rhubarb or uh, uh, spinach leaf, perhaps kale. <laughs> and you've got some slices of mandarin orange in it. So let's see how this works out before I just bite into that. This one is really, really good. Oh man, winner, winner, chicken dinner, guys. <laughs> This was a good idea. Oh, man. Again, this one is called the 2016 Blanc du Bois. So that's B-L-A-N-C-D-U. And then B-O-I-S. It's an off-dry, and it's here at the Houston Winery. On a scale of 1 to 10 for a white, this is perfection. It's literally in between flavors. I would definitely give this a 10. And I missed somebody made a, um, made a uh, comment about one of the tequilas. Yes, so off dry is what this is. This is really good. And this is really good too. Hmm. Um and this isn't overpowering with the taste of the mandarin oranges. I'm really not a fan of mandarin oranges. I'd rather have a regular orange, but I thought it'd be creative to see how it would pair. Hmm. And then the really good thing is they got great music playing as well. <laughs> Very good music. Really? Mm. So the grapes are locally grown and, and harvested and whatnot. It's not like they're reaching all over the place to get something. Thank you so much for the super heart. Very much appreciate it. I'm a young Brit that's hooked to tea and crumpets. What are some wines you recommend? Oh man. If I could find a place to do teas, aside from Tivana, <laughs> I would really, really, um, 215 live viewers. Really, we've got 215 people watching this right now. It's insane. Wow. Thank you all. Um, after I finish this last little spit of it, let me think of some that I would recommend. <laughs> You're going to have so much fun. <laughs> I need to put a little star by that one because I might not get it for my cousins, but I will buy that bottle for myself. It's absolutely wonderful. And the other good thing about it is a lot of people, when you're not familiar with uh, wine purchases, you're not certain if you're being over or underpriced. These are exceptionally competitive and great priced bottles. Um, I know you can go to Trader Joe's if you have that in your state or your country. Are you going to try a sparkling wine? They do have uh, two sparklings on here from 2014. And I'm not certain. Right now, well, actually, I can't because it says it's sold out right now, so I won't be able to. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to make sure to put a star by that one. And then, uh, do you work within the wine industry? Is it more of a hobby? Uh, the best way to answer that is when I was growing up, my mother, who um, my mother passed away July of 2010, my mom was a uh, flight attendant and a very, very passionate person about wine. She was hoping in her off time to uh, train to be a sommelier. It was a very big passion of hers. So when I became of legal age to drink, um, she would take me in Michigan up to the, the various wineries and whatnot along with her and explain everything to me. And the people who were, you know, working at the wineries would just be standing there like, wow. <laughs> They'd be so impressed with the knowledge she had. And um, when she passed away, there weren't very many things I wanted to keep. I love the memories I have of her more than the objects. But one thing I definitely kept was this big container uh, that had all these... Uh, all the corks 
from all the bottles that she had uh, purchased throughout her travels around the United States. So I have all those corks and I, I started to add on to them. Uh, started to add on to the corks in 2011. And yeah, it's all in storage right now, but at some point her intention was to take all of them and put them in a big plaque on her wall. So I retained the information of what she taught me and kept one of her favorite uh, books about wine. And uh, yeah, my goal is to do some of the wine country tours in other countries that she didn't have the opportunity to get to. Beautiful story. Sorry to hear about your mother's passing. She sounded incredibly intelligent. She was absolutely phenomenal and crazy. <laughs> my mother was a, a very intense little woman when you're five foot and, you know you just got this fireball of energy she was a uh, she's very aware of the the goodness and beauty of life not always pleased with people though and i inherited that from her <laughs> she was phenomenally amazing and just bat crazy she was hilarious too she had a sick sense of humor um, so yeah, I show honor to her in these cool ways by having these experiences and a lot of them she would do on her own. So yeah, that was my mom. May she rest in peace. Um, so yeah, that was the white wine that we tried and now we're going to get our palettes ready for the red wine. So yeah, that one is absolutely incredible. I'm really pleased with that one. Uh, one of you asked uh, in your comment uh, if there was anything about some wines that I would recommend. I always recommend starting with a Chardonnay or a white Zinfandel. It's very simple. It makes you feel fancy uh, and it's low pressure. <laughs> you can at least look like you fit the ambiance of what's going on without being, uh, you know, out of context. So what we have now is a, a red. Reds usually as soon as you hear, thank you so much. Oh, it looks so pretty guys. Okay. So usually when you have a red, I don't drink often. Does red wine tend to always be stronger than white? Um, that's not always the case. So this is the body on this one. It's uh, very, very dark, but not as dark as some reds can be. And it's not heavy. If it was heavy, it would stain the sides of the glass but it doesn't um so this is and that wasn't a fiji water endorsement by the way that's just for me to be able to keep myself hydrated i just prefer fiji um, <laughs> um but uh yeah i always say start with a white zinfandel or a um or a chardonnay um if you can get your hands on a sparkling they're not always just for special occasions they're great for sitting out in your backyard or if you don't have a backyard your porch at the end of the night after a long day of work especially for me as a teacher like please dear god it makes it a great weekend experience um so let's see what this one smells like first and foremost remember we have to follow the appropriate order so whoa okay it's uh, uh not very manly but i love rosé rosés are great and um you know, all the whole hip hop scene really made rose this big thing. Like you hear about uh, Ace of Spades and stuff, which I've had Ace of Spades. Um, you hear, well, not so much now, but like Louis the Thirteenth, where um, when I was married years ago, um, the year I got engaged, the month I got engaged, we uh, all celebrated with double shots of Louis the Thirteenth because the uncle had it in his uh, cellar. So like dope experience but i'll never go out to a facility and like buy it if i can't afford the bottle then i don't need to pay for the shot it costs that much but um this unlike those those are cognacs and um whiskeys and things of that sort and, and other you know flavors but with uh the wine she's just all about the fermenting process and the aging process but married years ago aren't you in your early 20s <laughs> in my early 30s <laughs> i'm 32 <laughs> it's in my 20s 10 plus years ago. <laughs> um, responsible drinking runs in the family, I see. We love it. Now, granted, I live in a dry house right now, so I have to go out to drink, but um, I absolutely love it. Oh, wow, I could have sworn you were like 24. God bless you for thinking that, but now that you know my age and you see my face, you kind of like, oh, <laughs> she doesn't look her age. God bless you. That's good genes and staying hydrated. For all of you people who don't drink water, please drink water. It keeps you looking youthful. All right, so we got a moment to sniff this, and... Um, the uh, black girl magic. <laughs> the the smell con in comparison to the white one is 
strong? Are you more of a wine or a liquor drinker? Mm -hmm. As a single woman, when I lived by myself, I was more of a wine drinker. In my 20s, I was a liquor drinker because you're trying to show out and show that you're not a lightweight. Um, in my 30s, based upon the relationships I've been in, I'm single again now, but the relationships I've been in, um, when you're dating a Korean, you're drinking soju and neju and beer. And when you're, drink, uh, you're dating a, a black guy, they're still on like, Caracier and Hennessy. <laughs> so <laughs> I prefer the wines than the uh, beer, than the spirits. All right. The smell on this is pretty darn good. Um, it is heavier in comparison to the white wine that we had, but we need to try to get an idea of what the palette is. So let's see what we got. Mm. Okay. Okay, I can definitely see why this was the champion. Oh my gosh. That's hard to believe it's a red as smooth as it is. It's like, yeah. All right, so heck yeah, this is a winner. <laughs> this is a 2015 Roughneck Red. It's medium body. It's flavorful. It's, it's, inc it's incredible. Um... Usually you associate reds with, with meat, uh, you know, red meat, red wine. I could get away with doing a white fish with this. Oh man, it's good. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm kind of like knocked off of my, my game with it. This is incredible. And again, this is the one that was the class champion at the rodeo this year. So it came to win and I see why. Uh, do they have a website? Let's double check. Yes, they do. They have a website and it is www.water, W-A-T-E-R, the number two, and then wine, W-I-N-E dot com. And they're on Twitter and they're on Facebook. This is so exciting. This one is really, really good. This is really good. <laughs> However, as good as it is, I don't have a macaron that I believe will pair well with this. I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> oh, that's pretty clever water to wine. I know, isn't the name real cheeky? What's that? The co You know, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I don't think salted caramel would be a smart move with this one. So we're going to try this with the coffee based upon the recommendation of the lady behind the counter. So <laughs> look at this macaron, eh? It's got gold undertones to it and its feet. That's another thing. Um, the place that I got the macarons from, Bite, uh, their opening year, I did an interview of uh, the pastry chef and her husband. They're the ones who own it. And I learned the proper terminology for it. So when you see those little edges around it, it's supposed to be perfectly even in presentation. That's called feet. So the little feet on it are perfect. Um, and they get everything from locally sourced facilities well, so the, the, as well. So the flavors are very rich and very pure, no artificial flavors. So let's see, we got coffee right here, which I, at some point, you guys, I might have to do a tea tasting and a coffee tasting as well. Um, I'm obsessed with teas. I have a whole pantry full of them at home. And I used to uh, work at coffee shops at first. In fact, my very first job was at a coffee shop. If you're from the Midwest or from Canada, then you've heard of Tim Hortons. Or if you are a hockey fan, then you've heard of the player Tim Hortons. I used to be the donut dunking girl. I used to make the, the donuts and then uh, advanced over to coffees and whatnot. So, okay, so here we go, let's see. Oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> this is the salted caramel. <laughs> All right, let's just go with it. Let's go with it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that was a horrible idea <laughs> so we're gonna put this one back oh this is the coffee <laughs> well no i grabbed the wrong one i grabbed the salty caramel <laughs> it was awful so this is the coffee one i should have sniffed it to be sure i wasn't sure i was like i thought this was salty caramel but i don't know nothing this is coffee. I should have smelled it. Oh my gosh. I tarnished my palate. All right. 
Yeah, that's coffee. <laughs> All right, let's see. It makes it taste like a berry infused coffee. How weird is that? But that does happen. And if you don't know anything about coffees, some of them that you can find in Asia and uh, some specialty uh, North American coffees can be infused with berries. So it's pretty good. Not bad. Again, everyone, this one is called the 2015 Roughneck Red. So this is my first time in your scope. Do you work here? I sure don't. <laughs> I'm just a nerd. <laughs> just an overall nerd. If they were hiring, I would definitely work. Just to be able to talk wine all day, it's great. But, um, yeah, I'm just a nerd. <laughs> this is, I very much like that white wine, but I'm truly impressed with this one. I didn't know what to expect. There was not a lot of, uh, a lot of connotation there, if you will, on the menu of just what to expect, except for the fact that it's a champion wine. So that's amazing. Hmm. So if you are learning something new that you didn't know about wine, make sure to hit those hearts. All of those hearts, the more that they add up, the more opportunities I have to broadcast even more frequently on Periscope and become a, uh, a superstar broadcaster, if you will. There's thousands of people that use this, but um, not too many in, in my genre. <laughs> I've been hitting them, fam. <laughs> Thank y'all. <laughs> this is this one is really good, you guys all. It really is. Oh man! Thank you so much for the super heart. That means so much. I appreciate it. It wasn't bad with the coffee at all. It was not. That was a smart move. Wow. Man. All right. We are getting to the tail end, ladies and gents. We're down to the dessert one at this point. So I'm going to move this just a little bit because I need to rinse my, my mouth. Yes. It's made from the same grapes as Wow. So we've got it's a grape sweeter. twin. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sweeter and a higher alcohol content. So it's about 16.1% alcohol content. Wow. The color is pretty on it, too. <laughs> People have tuned in to hear about Houston Winery. <laughs> wow. That is by far more people than I've had view in, in quite some time. Oh snap, they're playing my jam in the background, just the two of us. Yeah, I told you the music is just wonderful. So dessert wines uh, on occasion can be a little bit uh, a little bit more in price, but it's so worth it. You're not gonna be finishing these bottles off as fast first and foremost as you would say you just have a white that you kind of have laying around in the house and you never wanna leave your bottles just sticking straight up you want to keep the cork of your bottle wet at all times um you just want to take good care of your wines it's not for showing out and chugging and, and guzzling and i think if you don't if you don't have that understanding of it then you really don't know that there has to be a, an aspect of finessing and protecting your bottles if you will so so this is <laughs> did she say 16 percent? yeah she said 16 percent I like to drink my wine. <laughs> That's an interesting space to drink it. There we are. All right. So we have a dessert wine here. And obviously from the name, they're going to be a little bit more sweeter. Um, sometimes they're more heavy in body because they're going with something like as dense as a chocolate mousse cake or a big pie. Oh, such good stuff. So um, this is the color. And it looks very similar to the white wine. It's just a little bit uh, darker, and I'm stressing the word little, because if you didn't see the first glass, you really can't. But I am excited to see what this one is about. So this is Blanc Barrel Port. Blanc means white, so. 
oddly enough, and I'm not congested, the smell is extremely flank, uh, faint. So it is very dependent upon what you smell, I mean, what you taste. It's got some weight to it. You might not be able to see it because of the color, but it did hit all the way up here and kind of take some time to come down the sides of the, of the glass. This ought to be good. All right. Very slight. Ooh. That's a sneaker. <laughs> this is one that can sneak up. Um, the first little, the first uh, little swig of it, the flavor was very smooth. And then all of a sudden when I swallowed it, it was just like bite, 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 bite. <laughs> um, I would pair this with like white cake or something of the sort. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with a dark snack. So we've got two desserts sitting here, if you will. We've got the salted caramel that I had already took a serious bite in. Nashville, that's what's up. So let's see. Um, oh gosh. And like I said, the ingredients on this are so fresh. The caramel just slid out of my macaroon onto my pants. <laughs> All right, so let's check that out. Not a good pairing for the salted caramel, but again, honest to goodness, salted caramel can stand on its own. It doesn't need anything. So we're going to finish that since it's melting. Wow, that's good stuff. And then we're going to grab the key lime pie. And just see just see where we're going with it. Um, Man, that salted caramel was good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is the key lime pie one. Yeah, and these are macarons that I got from Bite, B-I-T-E. And um, there's only two places that make macarons in Metro Houston that I eat them from. I eat them from Bite. No, I eat them from a place called Sweet, which is at City Center, which is uh, a little bit further down the road. One day we might stop in there. Their display is insanity. All right. Key lime. It's not bad. It actually made the key lime flavor count exactly. It it made the flavor come through so much stronger. But my general assessment, I'm going to give this dessert wine a 7. So we gave the off dry white a 10. That red wine deserves an 11. And I'd say a seven with this because if you are a foodie like I am and you're really hoping to have it paired off with something, you might have a little bit of difficulty because your taste buds are already set for some of your favorite desserts. And this is kind of standalone. It really doesn't need anything. It doesn't have to be paired. So if you're looking just to have it on its own, then yeah, this is perfection. If you're looking to try to enjoy it with something, it might take you a while before you find the right footing for it. The irony of saying footing and I'm sitting here eating the little feet. All right, let's finish the key lime. <laughs> the whole thing. <clears throat> Again, for those of you who are just tuning in, um, next week we're going to go to a museum. What is that? It's called the Houstonian. We have a red, this red dessert wine called the Houstonian. Look at this one. Look at the color on it. Oh, my God. We're going to try that one then, as soon as I'm finished eating my macaron. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Houstonian port. It's a, a true uh, Ruby port, uh, so it's fortified with rainy, so it's oh 21% alcohol. Did you hear that? Like, did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? 21%. The dessert wines are trying to make sure you're going to take a nap afterwards. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one is the 2015 Houstonian port. It was the bronze 2017 winner at the Houston Livestock and Rodeo Show. So it's not a game either. And the Houston Winery has quite a few of, of listed winners on the current wine list. That's incredible. Mm. All right, let's finish this.
But again, as I was saying, while I was trying to move my macaron from one side to another, um, we're either going to go to the Houston Museum of Fine Arts next Thursday or uh, the Manil Collection, which is, uh, they're two very different museums. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, I had a series of photos a few months ago. Was it May? It might've been May, April or May of some of the things I saw at the museum. Uh, but we're going to do a museum visit because you all voted for it on uh, uh, Twitter. I just didn't expect to do this today, but since I experienced it, I figured I would share it with you all. Um, so let's finish this one, and then we're going to uh, try out that red. Is it in his? The jams, you all. This old Motown. And you know I grew up in Detroit, so it's just it's perfection. All right, let's see what this is. Let's uh, rinse the palette first, though. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> yes, they're getting it with the jams. They really are. Let's see what we've got here. Now, we already looked at the color of it and everything. Let's look at how heavy it is. Not at all. <clears throat> this is interesting. Very flavorful. Very, uh, the smell is immediate. It's almost as if you can smell the barrel that it was in. That's intense. That's really, really cool. All right. This is the dessert wine for me. <laughs> Back in Michigan, we have a cherry dessert wine, and they take the cherries and they put them in, um, they put them in their barrels, and then they take them after. No, I'm sorry, not before they put them in the barrels. The first thing they do with it is they freeze them, so they harvest them during the winter, and then they barrel them, um, and it's really really flavorful it's like pureed cherry for lack of better terms this heavy on the grapes which obviously it's wine it's supposed to be but the flavor of it is just it's really unique um it's not too sweet it's just sweet enough and in cons comparison to the white which you know was a, a sweet intentionally it was sweet this actually seems like it tastes a little bit sweeter not bad Hmm. In fact, this would have probably went well with the salted caramel. Now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> this probably would have been the best way. So again, let's go down the rundown of what we tried today. Hey, we have in the white wines, we had a 2016 Blanc du Bois, which is an off dry. Can it stand on its own? Yes, it can. And then in the red wine, we had the 2015 Russ has appeared for me. Um, for the red wines, we did the 2015 Roughneck Red, which was the class champion of the 2017 Houston Livestock Rodeo. And then we did two dessert wines. I was only going for three, but she treated me with the fourth for me to experience and share with you all. We did the 2014 Blanc Barrel Port, which was the reserve champion in 2015 at the Houston Livestock Rodeo. And then we just did the 2015 Houstonian Port, which was the bronze 2017 winner for the Houston Livestock and Rodeo this is really really awesome we did not try any sparklings because currently the sparklings are sold out so i wasn't neglecting it it's just not available um and again can you suggest any good white wines i love wine um uh rieslings are pretty good red is gross to me you just haven't found the right red for you just like we learned when we went to the brewery a lot of people are like oh god beer well that's because you're thinking of heineken or the bud lights or you know the natty lights or the cores that you got when you were in college you have to be open to trying some of these craft breweries. There are some incredible flavors out there. There really are. Um, I mentioned one of the 
uh, beers that I had in Seoul, South Korea, which was infused with coffee and chocolate, and it was dark as my shirt. It was the most gorgeous beer I'd ever seen, or having uh, a Guinness out there and how good it was. The wine is really, really good that I'm trying right now. So I would suggest for someone who's new to it, if you're looking for a white, to try a Riesling first. I also mentioned doing Chardonnays and doing white Zinfandel. Those are very easy segues in. Niagara wine is great up here in Canada. Really? As many times as I was in Canada, I never did do, well, you know, the legal age of drinking up there is 19. So I celebrated my 19th birthday there. Uh, but I went to a pub in Windsor and uh, I can't even remember what I had. It was it was years ago. I just remember that you uh, you have a higher alcoholic count. I feel like I'd waste a bunch of money of trying to find the right one. No, you wouldn't. You would explain to the sommelier, you would explain to the person who works there um, to explain everything based upon what you're looking for, and they'd be able to place you in the right direction. Canada's prettiest little town. I've been to Niagara before, but I wasn't of drinking age when I went to Niagara. Uh, and when I was of drinking age, I was in Detroit, so that's 15 minutes away from, you know, Windsor. So that's where a lot of my... Uh, early experiences were but the, yeah the beer alcohol content is much higher than it is in the states so um used to go up there to gamble and when you go to casinos you can usually drink for free and one can of that and i'd be sitting at the blackjack table like what number are we supposed to go up to <laughs> oh, okay that makes sense but i was talking about when i shop in the grocery store depends on where you are barefoot is a good brand um sutter home is a good brand, but um, not that much. Uh, I don't have like brand brand uh, loyalty. If I find a good one, I find a good one. Stella Rosa is my favorite. Stella Rosa is pretty good too. This one is great. My feet were more knocked off about the red flavors than the whites today. That's pretty cool. Not bad at all. I love the Moscato Olive Garden sales. <gasps> oh my gosh. If you live somewhere, man, I wish I was 21 already so I could drink wine without my parents. It'll come faster than you realize and then you'll be hoping to go back in time. Trust me. If you live where Olive Garden is, Olive Garden is a franchise restaurant. And it's, you know, it's an American take on Italian food. They sell Roscato, not Moscato, and a lot of people know about Moscato because y'all listen to Drake. But <laughs> Roscato, it's their own label of it. I don't know who they private label from, but that Roscato is amazing. It's so sweet and flavorful. And uh, I still don't know if all locations let you buy a bottle or not because I know I begged for one at, at one point. <laughs> still looking beautiful. Thank you. All right, let's finish the last week with this. So I definitely, okay, do not rush it. You will be starting wanting to go back when you were just hitting 20. Yeah, definitely don't rush the aging experience. But um, I do love the fact that I am the age that I am. It's a blessing. And I'm finally at the point where no one says, aren't you a little too old to be doing none of that? Like nobody does that. They accept my grownness now. <laughs> um, no, not all locations would allow me to buy it. Um but I know that rule has probably changed at this point. I haven't been to an Olive Garden since March when it was my aunt's birthday. And at that time I was with my grandmother, so we're not gonna buy anything anyway. Um, and beyond the uh, beyond the scene is lit. I really wish they would have just gave the acronym no meaning and just left it at BTS for uh, for Western audiences. But that's neither here nor there. So there you have it, everyone. We went on a wine tasting today, and you missed it yesterday because of the fireworks. I went on a, a daiquiri tasting. That was crazy. Um, don't quite know if I would broadcast that one, though, because daiquiris can be very uh, heavy-bodied and heavy on the alcohol. And I had one, and as soon as I was done with it, I was standing in the parking lot looking at the fireworks doing this. <laughs> so I don't think that would be the most apropos thing to share with you all. But this has been a really awesome experience. Um, if I go on another adventure at some point today while I'm running my uh, my errands, then I might turn the periscope back on. Who knows? I don't know where I'm going next. Um, I don't know. Please do come back and do the T-scope. I enjoy this, uh, this scope. You know, I got to find the right tea place because um, T-Vana is a great 
place to start <clears throat> and they do educate you quite a bit. Tivana is also owned by Starbucks for those of you who don't know. Um, but I want to find a private facility. 841 views, do more broadcasts. This is insane. 841 views. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, I don't know where else I might adventure to today. But if I do, I might turn the periscope on. If not, then we can at least anticipate, uh, we can at least anticipate the museum next week. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you all everyone for stopping in. I'm going to finish my water now so that I can get my sobriety levels correct and probably um, amble around. Someone asked what a daiquiri is. It's a blended drink and daiquiris can either be a Long Island iced tea, a margarita, a hurricane, which is a Louisiana drink. Um, it's a lot of ice, a lot of alcohol, a lot of flavor. I had a, I had a Firefly, which was a peach and cinnamon flavored one with uh, a lot of whiskey. And then I had uh, I had one that had the flavor of a chocolate dipped strawberry. So it was really, really good. It was really good and it was way too much. And they're very, very cheap. <laughs> and, and they can be extremely heavy on flavor, but they can be real bland. But um, here in Houston, because we're so close to Louisiana, and Louisiana is kind of where those daiquiri shops came from anyway, um, you know, they, they're very heavy on the flavor and they insist on you sitting down. You can drive up and drive to get them, but you need not drive and consume that. You would definitely kill everything up. So, um, you know, it's just, uh, it was an awesome experience. So who knows, maybe we'll do that one day, but for now, this is it. So thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you for stopping in and watching.